the spectacle, the surprises, all of those emotions. Avengers Endgame was far more than a movie. It was an experience. Three hours of great moments, an emotional story, and one of the biggest cinematic events of all time. As moviegoers flock to see the film two or even three times in theaters, there's one thing that will remain true. Not only will it be nearly impossible for any other movie franchise to top Endgame, but it will be extremely hard for Marvel to get close to the success of this fourth Avengers movie. Many factors play into this, expanding far beyond the hype that has been built up for years in the MCU. If there's one word to describe the release and response to Avengers Endgame, it'd be unprecedented. No matter how much you nitpick little decisions, character arcs, or providing too much fan service, there's no denying that Avengers Endgame is a masterpiece of blockbuster filmmaking. The Russos, along with screenwriters Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely, had to juggle the stories of dozens of heroes, time travel, and putting together an epic three-hour conclusion that still has our minds blown. Just looking back on the movie, there's so many huge moments along with little gems we can recall. There's Hawkeye losing his family to the decimation, Scott Lang reunited with his daughter who is five years older, Tony Stark talking with his dad, Thor having an emotional scene with his mother, and so many connections to past movies in the MCU. The film finds a great balance between the emotional scenes and fun scenes including the Professor Hulk character, Fat Thor, and Ant-Man's initial time travel travel attempts. And it all builds up to a great cinematic fight featuring the likes of Captain America wielding Mjolnir, Captain Marvel teaming up with all of the other female heroes, and the return of our favorites including Star-Lord, Spider-Man, and Black Panther. That is the future calling. Moments of the film have already seeped into pop culture. This includes a whole different look at I Am Iron Man, Love You 3000, and all of the fat Thor costumes people will be getting ready for Comic-Con conventions in the coming years. Avengers Endgame isn't just a single movie release that has appealed to the masses, though. As we all know, it is the culmination of years of building, going far deeper than the cliffhanger ending from 2018's Avengers Infinity War. The creation of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is something never seen on the big screen, at least not on the same scale and size. Only horror movie franchises like Freddy vs. Jason or the Universal Monsters have attempted something like this. Not only have we followed the journey of Steve Rogers and Natasha Romanoff, but the villain Thanos has been built up for years as well. With so many one-and-done villains in superhero franchises, the way Thanos was built up and executed is going to be extremely hard to match. As Marvel gears up for Phase 4 of the MCU, the sad truth is that the success of Avengers Endgame will likely never occur again. That's nice. It's a nice sentiment. Let's break down the math a little bit, and don't worry, we'll make it easy for you, not like Eric Selvig working on a chalkboard. Just in the opening weekend alone, Endgame has absolutely shattered box office records. It has truly cemented its top spot at the box office for years to come. Domestically, Endgame surpassed over $350 million, setting records for US opening weekends, along with notching up records for the fastest to $100 million, $200 million, and pretty much any figure above it. The overall box office in Endgame's opening weekend was equal to 90%. Yes, 90% of the whole box office take. Not to mention, Captain Marvel remained on the charts at number 2. And for context, last year's Infinity War set the weekend box office record with $257 million. Endgame made 90 million more than that record, going leaps and bounds above every record previously set. Worldwide, the numbers are even more impressive. A five-day haul of $1.2 billion has set off even more global records, with the film performing strongly in China and the UK, among others. Out of all 22 movies in the MCU, there have only been 8 movies to gross over $1 billion in the worldwide box office. And Endgame did this in the first weekend. Yeah, I can fly. Along with box office numbers, it's going to be extremely hard to duplicate the incredible cast the MCU has had to work with over the years. There are some major losses and anchors to the MCU we will never see again. The biggest among these is Robert Downey Jr. He turned the obscure Iron Man into a household name, 
helped grow the MCU. And along with his starring roles, Downey Jr. stepped up to the plate for numerous cameos and post credit scenes to help build up the MCU and make it feel like a living and breathing universe. Departing along with Downey Jr. is Chris Evans, another core member of the group. Can you imagine an Avengers movie without Captain America at the helm? And while she has a solo movie in the works, don't expect too much more of Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow after seeing her character shockingly perish in Avengers Endgame. New heroes can come on board and more films will get made, but things will just never feel the same without Iron Man, Captain America, or Black Widow. I don't mean to make things difficult. I know, because you're a very polite person. As the MCU enters Phase 4, we will need new heroes to root for and new worlds to get built around. But everything will be compared to the last. Avengers Endgame was the first time a decade-long story culminated on the big screen. Of course, the MCU now has the X-Men to play around with after the acquisition of 20th Century Fox, but we already have a huge library of X-Men movies. Along with the loss of signature characters, other characters are moving on to a whole new venture, television. Yeah, well, what else is new? Thanks to the Disney Plus streaming service, we're getting shows for Loki, Vision and Scarlet Witch, The Winter Soldier and Falcon, and Hawkeye. Who knows what type of cameos we'll have on these shows as well. But there is going to be a major difference once we start getting full seasons of MCU TV. Currently, seeing these heroes on the big screen feels like an event and spectacle. Showcasing the heroes on their own shows will water down the big screen experience a little bit. Watching Hawkeye shoot down a flying ship from behind won't feel like a great movie moment if we've already seen bow and arrow action a countless number of times on his TV series. If Scarlet Witch is levitating items every time she goes on an adventure with Vision, it won't be the same seeing it in films like The Avengers Endgame. The progression to TV only feels natural, but it will definitely make a difference to how these characters are portrayed on the big screen. It only adds to the importance of Endgame even more. Not only did the film cap off years of built-up stories, but it also helped launch the franchise into multiple television shows, including Loki disappearing with the Tesseract, the Falcon getting Captain America's shield, and the Scarlet Witch still missing the love of her life in Vision. These television shows represent the excess success that Endgame has created and will all point back to the movie as their ultimate origin story. So as things get spread out and the MCU branches off into different aspects, a big movie spectacle like Endgame could only get further and further away. But at the end of the day, Marvel Studios has steered its ship extremely well. They will continue to have major successes, just obviously not on the same level as Endgame. All right, we done. One of the main comparisons to the MCU has been the DCEU. The problem is that the DCEU may have already missed its chance to have the Endgame-like experience. Yeah, it looked expensive. Justice League was rushed and only shows how special Endgame is. We've grown to know the movie versions of these characters over a whole decade as opposed to just a few years. While DC has definitely bounced back with films like Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Shazam, it may be too late to capture the same magic that Endgame has. So if DC cannot do the same thing and it'll be challenging for Marvel to reach the same level of success, what other franchises are left? Universal tried building the Dark Universe with actors like Tom Cruise, Johnny Depp, and Angelina Jolie, but the box office failure of the Mummy remake forced the whole new universe to crash and burn. Okay. Avatar was a box office behemoth and multiple sequels have been planned, but the feelings of the original movie may not be as strong as they once were. And while looking at the top box office movies, you see films like Titanic. When Titanic was first released, the movie was a huge event and felt like a huge event. While standalone movies can definitely find some huge success, there is no denying the fact that the MCU has completely changed this and resulted in much higher expectations. The only way to match this would be by building up a whole other universe which Marvel has proven is no easy task. If there is a franchise who could go toe to toe with Endgame, it'd be Star Wars, and could even be done in the same year. And The Rise of Skywalker definitely had hope of presenting an incredible final journey of the Skywalker saga. But the poor reception to The Last Jedi may have completely hindered the massive box office expectations. Even the return of Lando Calrissian actor Billy D. Williams and J.J. Abrams coming back to the director's chair may not be enough to bounce back from The Last Jedi backlash. While we have no doubt The Rise of Skywalker will be a huge hit, it isn't following an equally big hit like Endgame had with Infinity 
War. So for many of us, the experience of seeing Avengers Endgame will truly be once in a lifetime. Yes, Marvel will have huge hits in the future. So will Star Wars. So will DC. But all of those hits will be followed up with a footnote about how far away they are from reaching the crazy milestone Endgame is set. Now that the Endgame is over, what do you think is next? Will anything ever compare? Is there anything we missed in our discussion? How many times will you see it in theaters? Does DC ever have a chance of competing? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to Screen Rant for more great content. Thanks for watching, Marvel fans.